welcome to our series on Irish native trees. In this episode, we're going to talk about the amazing witch elm. Now, elm is a tree, a native tree to Ireland, that wouldn't be so familiar with a lot of people. Because unfortunately, elm has succumbed to Dutch elm disease. Up until about 5,000 years ago, elm, along with oak and common ash, was one of our big dominant tree species. It was one of, the, one of the trees that took over an area. But a disease came along at that stage and can be seen in the pollen records that there was a big die out of elm and it never fully recovered to the numbers that it was back then. However, elm did recover to a certain extent and up until the 1980s, Elm was still reasonably common as a big tree. It was planted by people quite often. You'd find it in a lot of parks, a lot of big estates, and it was often planted along canals when the canals were built in Ireland, planted as a resource. So now to find a large, mature and healthy elm tree is unfortunately a very rare thing. But in the wonderful Glenvey National Park, we are lucky that we have some fantastic specimens, a couple of amazing trees just around us. So to identify elm trees, much like identifying any tree, you look at three things. You look at the leaf, you look at the bark, and you look at the fruit or the seeds. Now, as it's early autumn, we won't be able to look at the seeds here because elm trees, along with poplar trees and willow trees, they have their fruits in springtime. They have their flowers in early spring, which are then pollinated, and then their fruits or their seeds distribute in late spring or early summer. So the elm seeds are long finished for this year. However, we can still tell it's an elm by looking at the bark and looking at the leaves. And the leaves can be quite large. This one is as long as my thumb. They can quite happily get to twice that long and they're serrated along the edge, finishing with a sharp point, and they have a little bit of a different end. In by the stem, they have one lobe that sticks out a bit longer than the other. And the other thing, and it's always good to feel a leaf when you're trying to identify a tree, because there's a few trees that have similar shaped leaves, but elm is very, very rough. It feels like a soft sandpaper. So immediately when you feel that tree, you won't mix it up with, say, a hazel that's kind of similar, but much softer, much more hairy. It's the lovely rough feel of the elm leaf. The buds on the elm tree are another giveaway. They're very small and very pointy, as sharp as a pin at the very end. And then the bark is a little bit like oak. It's fissured, it's cracked, supporting lots of life. Now, a lot of elms that grow in the wild in Ireland today are very young. They succumb to the Dutch elm disease once they're beyond 15 years or so. So nowadays, the elm is pretty much reduced to a hedgerow tree. You don't see it outside of hedgerows or understories as young trees. And the bark is quite smooth up until about 15 years or so. But after about 15 years, the bark starts to develop cracks. And then there's a bark beetle that carries a fungus on, on its back, unbeknownst to itself, and it gets inside those cracks in the bark, looking for its own food, but it carries that fungus, and that fungus then attacks the tree and unfortunately kills the tree. So hence, very unusual to see such old and mature elm trees such as this. There are also many different species of elm around the world, and if you're wondering what elm it is, ask yourself which elm, and you've got it, because this the Irish native species is called witch elm. So we've two Irish native trees that are very resistant to water if they're submerged. There's alder and there's elm, witch elm. And witch elm wood, when it's submerged in water, it is very, very slow to rot. Alder is much the same. So witch elm was a very valuable resource years gone by, especially when canals started to spread out around the country. An awful lot of canals had elms planted by the sides. The roots, of course, help stabilise those canals, help hold the banks together. And also the trees themselves provided shelter. But as well as that, 
those trees then could be used as materials for pipes or for whatever else that they needed that had to be submerged, that wood being so strong and so rot resistant. Elm trees nowadays, the few that are left in this mature majesty that is here, support an awful lot of biodiversity. You can see on the bark, you can see the lichens, you can see different funguses growing, and you can see mosses growing. And then of course, any bark that's this fissured is going to hold a whole load of different insects and all of the other characters that are preying on them. Elm trees, wonderful trees, reasonably rare, unfortunately, in the landscape, but watch out for them around your area. See if you can find some of the elm with that rough, rough, sandpapery feeling leaf. A lovely thing to have growing in your garden.